We are John and Ellie, the Barefoot Doctors. We lost our new Leopard 50 catamaran to fire, so we began our search for the perfect performance catamaran for selling us around the world. Jump on board for this adventure, and together, who knows what we can achieve? Because <laughs> life is better barefoot. Welcome to another episode of Barefoot Doctors Sailing. We are on this 8,000 mile Atlantic crossing and at the moment we are racing northwards in order to avoid another storm front that's coming at us from the west. Here you can see our track as we travel northwards with the first two days in strong winds and rough water and then variable winds and calm. We need to be far enough north to get above this storm before it comes crashing past to avoid these strong northerly winds. So join us on the morning of day five just after we have dropped the Oxley Levante and motored through the night. So it's the morning of the fifth day. It's about 9.30 in the morning. We just started to get a wind in completely the wrong direction from what was predicted. So we're getting a wind from the east, which we're very happy about. Any wind is good wind. Uh, a headwind probably isn't so good, but any wind is better than no wind when you are trying to motor. So we've got this, it's a gentle wind. It's about seven to eight knots, or maybe even 10 if we're lucky, but that means we have put out well, obviously we've hoisted the main sail first and we have put out the Genoa as well and we are now going to try and sail for as far as we can while this wind holds. It's forecast to fade away again so it might just be a spurious flash in the pan. It might only go on for an hour or two and then die but that's life. When the system path comes in from the west the winds will change from exactly the opposite direction and come at us from the west side so that's from down there but both winds will be pushing us north or helping to, for, for us to sail north, so that's all good. We put the engines on at 5 p.m. yesterday, so we've motored all the way through the night, um, roughly five and a half to six knots all the way with one engine at low rev, so trying to use as little fuel as possible. But it's so nice to get the sails back up and the engines off, so listen to that. It sounds so good. Splush, splush, splush. So this was not predicted, but uh, it's here, so we'll see how long it lasts. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if we go off course of it, we are going off course in the direction of St. Helena. Mm -hmm. Now once the wind shifts, we'll cut, cut up north again. And this peak will be in St. Helena, let's just for fun check it. Uh, six days? Yeah. Six days at two o'clock. Yeah, we'll still catch the bar open. <laughs> With no beer. <laughs> We're the ones bringing the beer to the bar. <laughs> it is a lovely sailing. Lovely sailing. All right, can anyone just tidy up after you, like all the lights yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that? You'll see there the lazy jacks are touching hard against the main sail. It's always just important to remember before you drop the sail to pull a lazy jack up again. How much slack? Four. Yeah, I can, I can take a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I know for a fact it's not rubbing hard against the cell, it's lagging yeah. against the cell. Yeah, it's working on this computer, but it's day five and we are doing eight knots in 14 knots of wind. True wind is there, 14 knots, and we're on the full main in Genoa, but this wind has been moving at first it was from the east, then it changed from the west, then it went to the south for a bit, and Eight it's kind and of half. fluctuating. We've got the auto helm on using the wind vane, so the boat automatically just changes direction to follow the wind, keep the speed up. But now we're heading quite nicely northwest in the right direction for Centralina. Let's show you outside. So we're on the port tack this time. If you remember earlier on, we were on the starboard tack, and. Yeah, we have the Genoa blasting along. It's so good to be zooming along under sail without having the engine. The wind before this last half hour was a little bit sedentary, as in soft, and we we're going six knots in about 10 knots. But look at that. Isn't that spectacular? We're 60 degrees to the wind, 
so it's very civilized sailing flat water because all those waves from the storms before have gone away but if you look at the horizon we have been out of sight of land now since four hours out of Cape Town In, after four hours the Table Mountain disappeared and we're seeing shafts of light out there in the distance nice fluffy clouds starting to appear so that's also a good sign I believe for good weather there are there are calm patches though so again that's the one thing we have to be aware of we're trying to avoid the calm spells that will form um, we know where the weather forecasts are predicting them but whether that's actually where they're going to be is a different matter Well, hi guys, this is Ellie and I'm still in Australia waiting for the time that John and I finally get back together. And um, I just thought I'd check in and say hi. And I really wanted to thank everybody for all the wonderful support that you've been giving John and the crew of Sea Central because it means a lot to them and they're really quite touched at all the support that they've had, which is wonderful. And um, yeah, I just thought I'd pop in and say hello and um, I'm still hanging out here at the beach and it's a bit of an overcast day today but um, normally along the spit here there usually is a lot of people fishing and uh, don't tell anyone because it's a really good spot to fish from <laughs> but um, while we're talking about fish oh my goodness these guys they have been on the water for over a month now and have not caught fish well actually they've caught a fish I can't quite remember the name. I say burrito, but I know it's not burrito. Uh, anyway, I'm not sure what fish it is. Anyway, Paul said it wasn't very good eating, so they tossed it back. And um, and then there was another fish. Well, actually, they caught that by default because it was a flying fish, and it flew and landed on the boat. <laughs> so that really doesn't count either, does it? So, yeah, they really haven't caught a fish, and they're starting to cop a lot of flack for it. So with all that ocean and all those fish under the boat they really haven't had any success. And of course Mark, the owner of the boat, went out and bought all these great lures and fishing rods and lines and all that sort of thing and they still haven't had any luck. So I wonder if you guys could just write in the comments and you know cross your fingers for them and, and they're really starting to get a bit disheartened. They reel in the lines every day and they have caught nothing and every morning they say, oh, well, maybe today's a lucky day and throw it out. And then again, they reel it in and, you know, nothing. So if you could write a comment just to encourage them that, you know, to keep going and send them some really good fishing vibes. Maybe, you know, a good fishing chant or a, a prayer that you say or something like that to help them land that fish because they just need one to redeem themselves. You <laughs> know, just one. Anyway, guys, I really, I, I really appreciate any of the support that you're giving them and it's just wonderful to read all the comments, especially because I'm not there with him because I'm missing him terribly. I know he's missing me as well. But it's less than a month before we get together in Dubai where we can finally fly back to Expedition Barefoot. It's in Greece and splash her and get going on our adventure for this season. So it shouldn't be too long, guys. Hang in there. And um, before you know it, we'll be all back together. Anyway, that's lots of love from Ellie in Australia, signing off, still barefoot. Bye guys. So Mark's meal today is Thai green curry. Mm -hmm. Nice bit of kick, phenomenal rice. <laughs> Puffy and dry, not like my soggy stuff yesterday. Uh, oh, the day, whenever it was, a few days ago. Great stuff, Mark. So you're gonna, you're gonna. Ali's oh, mom taught me well. <laughs> <laughs> so do you make it? At, do you make it at home for your wife? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can now. Shh. <laughs> Don't release this video. <laughs> People sit around, catch sleep through the day to make up for the night shifts. So we we do make a point. In fact, Paul made the point of saying the most important thing is to be bright and alert for your shifts so get to sleep when you can so that's what I'm going to do now it's about 3 o'clock yeah 3.20 in the afternoon 
and uh, I'm going to go and have a have a sleep for a couple of hours because I have the midnight to three. So I will go and get some sleep and then get up later on. See you later, guys. So here is a great knot that Paul Badenhurst uses for many things. It's especially good for bungee cords, but also works for fishing line. It is a slip knot that then locks when tight. So is the main knot used to hold the low friction rings up on the staunchions. The purpose of this knot, it slips, doesn't it? Does it slip tighter when? Yeah. It doesn't get loose. Yeah. Okay. It's the only knot really that you can use for a bungee as well to secure a bungee properly. Okay. Wow. Cool. So let's go through that slowly. Bring the rope from the back and then create a figure of eight. And then bring the tail of the rope from the rear up through the lower figure of eight loop and then through the upper figure of eight loop. Pull the two loops together and the knot will then slip down onto whatever it's tied to. You know you've done the knot correctly when you can just pull it out and it completely undoes itself automatically. Good luck guys and have fun using that knot. Obviously if you like what we do and, and the effort we're putting into these videos, subscribe. And obviously if you want more detailed information, live updates of our position and uh, a daily log, then log on to Patreon and support us through that. All the money obviously going to charity is to support suicide prevention worldwide. So look forward to seeing you on the trip. Catch you later. Thanks. So here we have the shrouds on the side of the boat so they lead obviously up to the mast and here we have on the shrouds a couple of bungees or one bungee tying the two uh, shrouds together now i thought it'd be an interesting little test for all the viewers please let me know what you think these bungees are there for i'm very interested to know if anybody can get the right answer to this this conundrum so we got on the boat and Paul brought with him a whole roll of bungee and we've used it for all sorts of things. And this was one of the things. So here we have bungee tied between the um, inner shroud and the outer shroud. And I want to put that question out to you all. What is it for? Don't know what the prize will be for the winner. Get your thinking caps on and we'll see who gets the right answer. See you later guys. So this has been an interesting day windless unfortunately but sunny so we're both running the engine and getting lots of solar power so we have done four lots of washing on the boat today everybody's washed all their dirty linen and their clothes and we have been running the water maker which is out the back of the boat so obviously we have to run the diesel engines to get to where we where there is wind and we're expecting the wind to come through this evening at about six o'clock when the engines go off but in the meantime we make water with the rain man and that is going into the tanks i've been doing some editing of videos the other guys have been doing stainless stainless polishing that's what they've been doing and here is the water tanks the tank that's been filled with the rainmaker is at 97% and we just turned over to the starboard tank and ran a wash on eco mode and it used 4% of the tank and say 5% because often the 100% is 100% it's often a little bit more than 100% so the port tank is being filled with the water maker and there you see the pipe going into the port tank and at 97% soon we're going to have to turn it off as in the water maker um, I'll let it get up to about 98, so there's 98. Maybe I'll let it get up to 99. The worst that can happen, it can overflow. Neil's the rain maker, or the water maker person. He knows how it all works, so we'll call Neil. So not only has the laundry been done today, but we have a very scenic view of somebody 
missing his wife. <laughs> <coughs> oh. What kind of oil are you using, Mark? Um, there's no oil here, but Neil has already oiled it. All right. With uh, vinegar and water, 50-50% to bring right. out the salt. Then we just go back over and polish. With and With nothing. Oh, just, with just, the, yeah, it brings yeah. out all the salt and then it makes it nice and okay. shiny. And then the last thing is we go back all over it again with silicon spray. And then it's protected for a few weeks. So much longer than if you didn't, because it rusts very fast. Stains very fast. Yeah. It doesn't really rust. But this is coming out really nice and clean. Yeah, you guys it's are doing amazing. a really good job, man. Having fun? It's quite rewarding, you enjoying making it shiny. Shine a clean boat is a happy boat. That's right. Everybody knows that. And a happy wife too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure my wife cares right no, no, now, but uh, somebody's wife. Yeah, somebody's wife is going to care about this. Absolutely. So, yay, Holly. <laughs> Here is the Rain Man stored in the aft cockpit and it is currently working. It fitted into this locker really well with the plastic container containing the membranes nicely being wedged into this locker diagonally. That's the pump making all the noise, working off 110 volt electricity. There's the pre-filter. The green line is the brine line, taking the waste water out through the hole in this self-draining locker. This clear pipe is the inlet pipe sucking water from the sea through a filter and tied to the swim ladder on the transom. Lead weights keep the filter under the water so it doesn't suck air up into the membranes. Then this white line is the purified water outlet and this white pipe is led to either side tanks. The product's specification says making 40, liters, 40 gallons per hour which is quite incredible. 140 litres per hour which is a big amount of water. So I'm going to be very interested to see if it actually does that. So we are tracking how much water it produces and how fast. It's a little bit hard to know how much power it's drawing because we have both the, um, the engine on, the engine's driving us as well, so that's producing 485 or 500 watts. There's 500 watts being produced by the solar which would be regulated so it didn't overcharge anything. So that could probably produce more if we didn't have the engine on. So at the same time we're running the washing machine. Here we're watching the tanks. We're on 67% now. Um, but I have in the past also got a um, like litre or two litre bottles and run the um, uh, water maker and pour it into the two litre bottles to monitor how how much water it makes exactly. The first thing when we run this down is you want to bring the, the, the uh, decrease the pressure. Uh, what's slowly of what's being pushed through the membranes. Right. And you do that by turning this knob Once the pressure is below 300 PSI, you can turn the pump off and then turn the lever fully closed. Then disconnect and pack away all the tubes. You push that in and pull. There, there we go. go. Yep. You push it in, it goes in and you can hear it click, but okay. you actually want both of oh, these pull pulled out. out. Right. Okay. And then to pull it out, you just push it back. Yeah, push okay. it back. Yep. Right. For a portable marker maker, I'll say this thing is, once you understand how to get it up and going, it, it's fairly outstanding in yeah. the quality of the output. It's good. Really good. It's really easy to get. I mean, once you know, like with that pressure thing, very simple actually, isn't it? Yeah, it's really just a couple of connections and yeah. then just making sure that the suction head stays underwater yeah. um, and doesn't uh, pull any air. But yeah. outside of that, it's, it's I don't want to say brainless, but it's yeah. pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. I'm just filming you talking to your yeah. mother from the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> we can now thanks to Sterling, mom can keep up to date. <laughs> right mom? Yeah. Hi. 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 <laughs> Hi. 
Mark's Leopard 50 has gory props, which are folding props, and they have overdrive. So they have two settings, one where the angle of the props is greater, so it gets more drive, in, and that you can use in low, in calm water, and to uh, use lower revs to get the same amount of speed. And what we found, at 1700 revs, we get an extra knot of speed using the overdrive. So we're on 1700 revs and we're doing 5.6, 5.5 knots. So the technique apparently is we go into neutral, let the boat slow down to 1.9 or 2 knots or less and then you put into reverse and go straight through from reverse into forward without stopping. Okay, so here we have the engine at under 1700 revs because we've got the rain man out and the speed we're getting through the uh, overground is 6.5, 6.6 and 6.7 knots. Um, and if you remember, at uh, in the ordinary drive, we were only getting 5.5 knots. So we're getting a whole extra knot of speed or maybe a bit more um, with slightly less revs. But even at the same revs, we're definitely getting a knot, a full knot more with the gory overdrive props. So my understanding is at a certain number of revs, revs the engine will be using the same amount of fuel so you're, getting, you're going from 5.5 knots to 6.5 knots with the same revs because you're using the gory overdrive. So that is uh, a one in, what is that, about a 20% increase in distance for the same amount of fuel. Over 3,000 miles or even 500 miles that would make a big difference. So that's quite an interesting um, new development. I've never heard of it before, but maybe it's been around for a while, but that's the first time I've ever heard of it. And so this Gory Overdrive prop certainly looks really, really good. So it's about 2.30 in the morning. It's just about the end of my shift, which was 12 to 3 a.m. Um, and I've seen absolutely nothing in the whole shift. We're motoring because the wind's absolutely calm. However, on the AIS, we see a ship that is coming up behind us it's going at 19 knots so we are there this other ship is there which is 20 miles away coming towards us and it's going much faster though so it's going at 20 knots and I know that because obviously with the AAS you press on this and it's going 18.8 .8 knots 366 meters long 51 meters wide and 15.15 meters deep, carrying pollutants. Just absolutely enormous. But of course, what do you see outside, apart from the moon? Absolutely nothing. Glassy water. Look at that. The most important information though on all this data is the CPA and the TCPA. The CPA is the closest point of approach, which means the distance that the two boats will be at their closest crossing point. The TCPA is the time that that closest point of approach will occur. So this ship will be 6.4 miles away from us in 1 hour and 40 minutes. Anything more than half a mile of CPA you can just leave alone and watch them carefully as they pass. I enjoy a beautiful sunrise all to myself and always optimistic to get the fishing lines out. It's actually a full moon as well. In two days we've only seen one ship. Last night, lights only just on the horizon, dipping on the waves. I mean, we are in very calm water. The storm front has passed way, way far to the south there. We, this is just clouds, uh, local clouds. It's nothing to do with that front at all. Um, but we have kind of mixed clouds here. A little bit of a rain squall up ahead there, it would seem. 
um, but we're looking for wind. We want wind. Rain squalls tend to suck the wind up. Look at that. Look at that. We're sailing into a, a rainbow. Looking for the pot of gold. Now that we are safely above the storm front, our next big challenge is how do we manage these huge areas of calm water to the north of us and all the way across to Santalina. So join us as we grapple with this brand new challenge. Thanks for watching guys and if you like what we do, show us the love and hit the like button. Then hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on your regular fix. Then. Kick off your shoes and you can come barefoot with us.